Today I'm really excited to announce my next series, The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. I've been looking forward to this one. I've been counting down the days till this game came out, and I am so excited to get to play this on the channel. I've, I'm a huge fan of the series. I, I've played every single one, that at least ones that have come to the West. I even played the uh, Miles Edgeworth Investigation 2, which I know technically didn't. I had to play the fan game for that. But I heard it was so good that I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And it was really good. So I have delved into them all. I'm a huge fan of the series. I think there's actually a fan game for, I think, maybe the first one or maybe both of the uh, Great Ace Attorney games. But I, I, t I was tempted to try it out, but I didn't. And now I'm very glad I didn't. <laughs> so we're going to be playing this. Actually, this is going to be a blind Let's Play. And to demonstrate just how blind it is, I did not realize there were even two Great Ace Attorney games. And this this collection here has both of them, one and two. I just thought there was one. <laughs> so it was kind of a pleasant surprise. I think I found out yesterday when I was reading the description that it comes with a collection of two games. I'm like, oh, sweet. So just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, I just, I'm just coming off of uh, two series. Um, I was swapping back and forth. And uh, I think I'm going to finish up World's End Club. I already finished Ratchet and & Clank. And then for this series, I'm probably going to do this one solo. Like, I'm not going to do another partner series along with it. Just because I found that, at least until I get better at it, that, you know, um, editing two videos, recording two videos, editing them, and working a full-time job, just I just feel I didn't have time. So I'm going to cut down to one series. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to dive into streaming a bit more. I'm going to stream, you know, directly off of YouTube, and I'm going to just, you know, stream a, a companion game, probably play, like, when I have free time, when I'm off from work and stuff, and then that'll just be uploaded, you know, directly to YouTube, uh, after the, you know, after I'm done with the stream. So that'll probably be what I do, or at least I'll try it out, see how it works. The other thing I want to talk about is spoilers, I said that already, <laughs> so spoilers, I want to, um, address spoilers, I don't want any spoilers, this is a very story-heavy game. Obviously, the story is a big part of the game, and so I don't want any spoilers. Um, and that's that means, like, overt spoilers. You know, obviously, just telling me something that happens that I shouldn't know. We, I don't even want, like, hints, though. I don't want, like, like, oh, remember this character said this one thing? Well, remember that. It'll be important later. Stuff like that, you know, where it's like, it's not you're not telling me something that's happening, but you're heavily implying or hinting at something. I don't want to know any of that. Uh, part of the fun is just figuring things out for yourself. There will be things I, I figure out, I'm sure. And I'm sure there will be plenty of stuff I don't figure out. And that's part of the fun. So, uh, yeah. So, I'm going to so, you know, just let me figure that out. Plus, I know from personal experience, like, I love figuring that. I love when I'm watching a YouTuber play these type of games. Like, a Phoenix Wright game or a Danganronpa or something. And they're lost. I find that fun because I'm like... I'm waiting for that plot twist to come and for them to actually like be surprised. It's less fun if they like know everything, but I'll of course be doing my best to, you know, figure out as much as I can. So one thing I was one thing I was doing is I, I went to the options before I started the video. And it's kinda weird. I was gonna look to see if I could adjust the endgame music and stuff. You know, so that it's not too loud. Um but it's weird. You have the option to turn the music completely off. See? Off. And completely on. Same thing with the effects and the voices. But for whatever reason, you can't you can't adjust the volume. Most games, you know, have a uh, volume music adjust, effects and voices, you know, adjustment volume. But for whatever reason, it doesn't appear you can do that, which is kind of strange. But we're just gonna have to cope. We're just gonna have to deal with it, <laughs> I guess. The other thing that's interesting is it says voices. Um, I don't know if there's maybe very limited voice acting. I know some of the other games there was. But I just kind of went into this assuming that there weren't voices, and it looks like there might be. I know, like, past games have had, like, anime cutscenes, especially the later ones have had, like, anime cutscenes and stuff that were voiced, but most of just the end game dialogue wasn't. So I was kind of going in prepared, like, I might have to try my hand at some voice acting, which I am no voice actor. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. I was just gonna kind of try it and, you know, try and give some, you know, see how it goes. And I might not have to, so we'll see. But if I do have to kind of voice a lot of characters, I'm going to try my hand at it. Let me know in the comments if it works or it doesn't. You know, give me your honest feedback because, you know, you might be like, oh, that's very cringy. Stop. <laughs> um, and I will. I don't want to 
make this annoying to watch because I'm, I'm trying, like, you know, my little amateur voice acting skills, which I know I, I, uh, I'm not, probably not that great. But, you know, who knows? I might surprise myself. New game. Oh, The Greatest Attorney to Resolve. Cool. And this is just The Greatest Attorney Adventures. Okay. So, obviously, we're going to start with The Greatest, <laughs> greatest Attorney 2. Nah, obviously, kidding. New game. You ready, guys? Are you as pumped as I am? Let's do this. Grab a hold of your pants. Clench those butt cheeks. We're going in. Yeah. Here we go. Cutscene. The Empire of Japan. After opening its doors, a push for cultural transformation brought great waves of Western influence to this far eastern island nation. Very pretty. I think this is Victorian London, right? The revolution washed over the land, making life in the capital exciting and unsettling. Hmm. It was a period of great change, and some were swept away by the tide. I love the music and the vibe already. Gunshot. Always starts with a gunshot. <laughs> he looks like Edgeworth, that <laughs> the waiter. Uh-oh, what happened? Who are you? But for one man, the turbulence of that era was just the beginning of an extraordinary story. Isn't that me? Isn't that my character? Oh, am I gonna be? Am I gonna be the defendant in the first case? Episode one: The Adventure of the Great Departure. Bienvenue à la Carnaval. <laughs> there you go. Qu great voice acting, right? Twenty-second November, eight forty-three. Am Supreme Court of Judic Judicature. I forgive me. How do you say that? Defendants Antechamber Five. Judicature. Okay, let's go with that. Okay, so this is me, the main character. I'm assuming. So I'm just gonna do my normal voice for you know for whatever our protagonist name is. Still can't believe it. I still can't believe this is happening. How can it be that just beyond the doors to this quiet little chamber is the highest court in Japan waiting to decide my fate? Yep, so we are accused of something. Isn't that just the uh, Phoenix right way? Hello. Okay. What? Okay, yeah, so maybe there isn't voice acting. Maybe it's just the uh, cutscenes. Oh, no, nothing. Save your glares. Murderer! <coughs> I went a little too hard on that one. <coughs> Who? My name is. <coughs> my name is. Ryunosuke <coughs> Naruhodo. Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Naruhodo. I'm a second year student at the Imperial Yume University. Three days ago, I somehow found myself in the middle of a horrifying incident. And now. Here I am, awaiting my trial. That's enough! Oh. He's not obliged to listen to such abuse, officer. Who are you? I'm this man's lawyer. I'll be defending him today. Lawyer? Yes. And until the judge has given his verdict on the case, no one has the right to treat him as a criminal. So you will hold your tongue! Technicalities! Look at you! You haven't even graduated yet! And yet, I still seem to know better than you how a court officer should behave. This guy's cool. I like him. Hey there. Right, Ryunosuke? Oh, y yes, of course. Sorry. What are you apologizing for? Oh, I... No, I suppose that wasn't my fault. But really, Kazuma? Kazuma? I never meant to drag you into this. I'm sorry. Ha 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 ha! There you go again, apologizing. Just like always. Ah. Though I must say, you've been all over the newspapers these past few days. 
Yume University professor murdered in cold blood by student. Okay, so... Okay, so I'm a student who killed my professor. I mean, supposedly. But obviously, you didn't actually do it, did you? Of course not! You have to believe me, I didn't do it! I... I can never murder someone. Then there's nothing to worry about. Straighten yourself up, hold your head high. You mean... I believe you. Yay! I know you're innocent, Ryunosuke. <laughs> Look at his little uh, headband flailing in the wind there. Kazuma Asogi, my best friend. I apologize if I butcher some of these names. Also in his second year at Yume University. But he's far more clever than I. A star student, in fact. He's even a qualified lawyer. Impressive, considering he's still an undergraduate. It's not that impressive. Eduardo scrolled. The very concept of lawyers is only a few years old. Here in Japan, anyway. Japan. I don't know why I said Japan. <laughs> My qualifications don't mean much, yet. You said exactly the same thing three days ago. But I'm proud to have a friend like you, Kazuma. Truly. Three days ago? Yes, that's when all this started. Yeah. Oh, that's him. Okay. Congratulations, Kazuma! It looks like you're going to get to study abroad at last. I know. I've been forever dreaming of this day. The funny thing is, I'm giving him, like, a British accent. Um, he's, his name's Kazuma. He's probably Japanese, but we'll roll with it. <laughs> Finally, those government elites have acknowledged my academic achievements and successes in court. So you'll be representing J Japan as you immerse yourself in the most sophisticated legal system in the world. Then again, I always picture, like, Edgeworth. Like, I always picture him kind of having a British accent, even though he's Japanese, so... Whatever. I'm really happy for you, and proud as your friend. There's not a soul in the universe who doesn't know Kazuma's name. He's a living legend. It's like there's some mysterious aura billowing around his temple. I want to bring about change in our legal system. Oh, sorry, this is Kazuma. That's why I have to cross the ocean to see the real thing with my own eyes. The heart of the British Empire. Sorry, that's me again. I have to get used to the names. The heart of the British Empire. I wish I could see it too. Then come with me. Okay, so we're not in England yet. We'd have a wild time hearing, tearing up the streets of Her Majesty's City of London together. If only it were that simple. Maybe I should give him a different voice then, because I'm going to have a lot of British voices for when we get to London, like London characters. It's going to be a bit of um, adjusting. Like, there are going to be certain voices I use that I'm probably going to like, that doesn't really fit after a certain amount of time or whatever. I'm kind of feeling it out, you know? Oh dear, look at the time. I'd better get going. Oh no, he's too- No, no. Alright, I'll see you later. I think I'll stay and enjoy this place a while longer. I feel like I won't do anything drastically different with his voice. Good idea. After all, it's not every day you get to visit a high-class western restaurant like this. See you in English class tomorrow then, partner. I don't know. I'll figure it out. It was straight after that. That's when it happened. Okay, so that was a flashback. We know. Asogi. Oh, wait, who's this talking? May I have a word? Oh, gosh. Too many characters. I mean, I know that we're going to have a lot. Professor, I didn't know you were coming. See, like, like with this sprite, he looks so, like, like badass. I don't, I don't want to give him the voice I gave him. Professor. I didn't know you were coming. Something like that. Well, this case has personal significance to me. But never mind that for now. Asogi! You should go immediately to the judge's chambers. To his excellency's chambers? Why? He was looking for you before. You advocating for the defense in this trial was a sudden decision. It seems there may be some confusion about procedures today as a result. Who is this man? That's what I want to know. I feel as though I've seen him at university before. Okay. Is he a teacher there? I see. I'll go at once then. I shall accompany you. Alright then, Ryunosuke. I'll see you in the courtroom. Yes. 
Thanks, Kazuma. Okay. So, still don't know who they are. Hey there. Uh, this is awkward. If I may. Yes, sorry? You must be the defendant. We are no scary Naruhodo, I believe. Yes, yes, that's right. What does he have on his, uh, belly there? My name is Eugen Mikotaba. Mikotoba. I'm a professor of forensics medicine at Yume University. Ah, Professor Mikotaba. Mikotoba. I've heard the name from Kazuma before. As I recall, he's been pushing to get the government to agree to Kazuma studying abroad. Asoga has told me about you. You and he are best friends, I understand. As such, I feel you should know. Know what? Well, as you've no doubt heard, Asogi has been granted permission to go and study in Great Britain. Yes, he told me. In a flashback. However, if he should fail to defend you in today's trial... Uh-oh. What? He's, go He's gonna die. <laughs> I'm afraid that, th that that permission will be revoked. And never granted again. Of course. So now, gotta up the stakes on me. Gotta up the stakes on me. Why don't you? Okay. What? Ah, as I suspected. You were unaware of this. I had a feeling a Soviet may have chosen not to tell you. Yeah. I mean, it would make sense that he wouldn't tell him. His dreams... So, he's agreed to defend me, knowing that if he fails, his dreams will be shattered? But I don't understand. Why would he... Why would the government do such a thing? The administration has to choose from a large number of applicants for overseas studies. It's very difficult to persuade them to grant permission, even in the most favorable of circumstances. Stances. I don't believe it. But I... I didn't do it, I swear it. I'm not a murderer. I'm sure that's true. Nevertheless, I can assure you that proving your innocence would be no easy task. You see, there are certain peculiarities about today's trial. Uh-oh. I don't like the sound of that. Sorry? What do you mean? Like, have I been set up? I mean, probably. You'll soon understand once proceedings get underway. Huh? But then, what should I do? Well. Naturally, I'm not going to suggest doing anything that could lead to a conviction. Right, so... As soon as the trial starts, the judge will pose a certain question to the defense. When that happens, you must answer before anyone else. You must say, I do. Uh, is this a trick? I do? But, what will the question be? Surely not. Do you expect the applications brought before you? Oh, I hope not. Of course not. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Defend it. Court is about to begin. Proceed to the courtroom at once. Ah, it would seem our surreptitious discussions are about to be cut short. So allow me to summarize. Kazuma Asagi must not be the defense lawyer in this trial. Uh, must not? Wait, what? Then who is? Of course, as the defendant, the final decision is yours. What are you waiting for? Do you want to be found guilty for failing to appear? Get moving. There's no point in anyone advocating for the likes of you anyway. This is it. If this trial goes badly, Cosmos dreams of studying a broader over. And what's more, I'll be found guilty of murder. Murder! And so... With absolutely no idea of what lay ahead, I embarked on that unforgettable trial. Ooh. This is always how they all start. They always start with just, it just throws you into the deep end in a trial right away. My one and only chance of proving my innocence. The trial that would decide my destiny. Here we go.
I wonder if we're gonna have a, 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 a Winston Payne lawyer type guy. 22nd November, 9 a.m. Supreme Court of, I still know how to say the word, judic judicature? Judicature? I'm gonna say judicature. I don't know if that's right. Courtroom 2. They're using fancy words. So this is a courtroom. Sure is. Looks nice. The Supreme Court of Judicature. No court in the land has more power. I don't much like the look of these people sitting in the public gallery. Lots of military and other uniforms in there. What does that mean? Is it saving? There's a little book writing in the corner. I don't know if that was uh, the game of saving or it was writing like some important information down. The powers that may have demanded that this be a secret trial. I'm oh, sorry, the powers that be have demanded that this be a secret trial. Secret trial? A trial that's closed to ordinary members of the public. Only military and government officials may attend. What? But why? It'll become clear in time. But for now... You need to concentrate, Ryanosuke. It's about to begin. Yeah! There we go. Oh! Hello! Oh, he looks cool. That's not the judge I know and love, but... Look at him. That's pretty dope. Ooh, that music! Ooh! Ooh! Okay, I'm feeling it. <clears throat> now what can I give him? Like I said, I'm honestly not gonna have a ton of like... Of like, varied voices. To be honest, like you know, like so I might just give him the same voice I gave the other guy. That Maybe that'll just be my kind of like... Gruff guy voice, I don't know. It kind of hurts my voice though. <clears throat> the court will now hear the trial of Ryanosuke Narohodo. The prosecution is ready, Your Excellency. As is the defense. Before we begin, there is one point of order I would like to confirm. Yesterday evening, the defense made a last minute request for a change of advocate. That's correct, Your Excellency. I made the request myself. Normal procedure is for the defendant's advocacy to be decided two days prior to trial. As this is an unusual circumstance, I am obliged to ask for final confirmation now. Who advocates for the defendant in this trial? This is it. This must be the question. Oh, I have to say I do here. Who's going to defend me? That's the question the professor meant. I do. Okay, I get it now. But then, if I say I do... I don't like those implications. I mean, I do, because I want to answer this. I need to answer quickly. What should I do? Uh, 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 I do. Hopefully he's not screwing me over. <laughs> Look at my face. I'm like so stunned. I'm like, uh. Your Excellency, no confirmation is needed. As I'm standing here beside the defendant, I hope it's clear who will advocate for his yes. defense. Uh, who that? Oh. Okay, it's me. What is the meaning of this unruly outburst? I... I would like to inform the court that I... That, 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 I, Ryanosuke Narohodo, will be defending myself. You will be... What? Come again? What are you playing at, Ryanosuke? Professor Mikotoba told me everything, just now, before the trial. He did what? He said that your dreams of studying abroad would be dashed if you were to lose. How sad. It means you don't have faith in me. You think I won't be able to get you off? <laughs> Phrasing, buddy. No, it's not that, really. It's, it's just that, well, on the off chance that things don't go well for me, I couldn't bear to be the reason that you... Yes. I knew that's how you'd feel. Which is exactly why I decided not to tell you. Tch. Professor Mikotova shouldn't have stuck his nose in. Very well. The court hereby recognizes the defendant's desire to advocate for himself in today's trial. Well, well. Does the accused admit defeat already? Renouncing his own counsel? Really? 
Make no mistake, Counsel. This merely shows that the defendant's innocence is so apparent he's confident he can speak for himself. Isn't that so, Narahad Naruhodo san? Uh, sure? Hmm? Oh. Yes, exactly. Exactly what I wasn't thinking. I'm not confident at all. <laughs> oh, there's the face. In fact, my mind's a complete blank. But we're gonna do it anyway. I realize you're in charge now, but still. Try not to look so bewildered. Hmm. Well, for a mere university student to be brought before the Supreme Court, you must have perpetuated a most heinous crime indeed. As you are no doubt aware, this is the Supreme Court of Judicature, I think I'm saying that right, of Japan. I should know I'm the judge, but really. Accordingly, the very highest standards of conduct are expected of all present. Do I make myself clear, Defendant Naruhodo? Yes, Your Excellency. Sir, it is therefore my duty to assess your competence for the task you have undertaken. My competence? What does that mean? I think I'm very confident. I think every game has this. It's gonna be like the tutorial. He's questioning your ability to do the job. Well, he can't be questioning it more than I am. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So let's start with the very simplest of questions. Oh, um, yes. Kindly state before the court the name of the victim in this case. Well, that's easy enough. I've heard his name more times than I'd care to remember. But... Wait. Ugh. I'm so nervous I can't even remember that. What was it again? <laughs> it's always so silly because they have to really like bring you down to basics. So it's like... I know my favorite was the second game where Phoenix Wright had to lose his, <laughs> lose his memory for the whole trial in order for us to get the tutorial again. And here they're just banking on nerves, like, he's nervous. Ryanosuke. Let me guess, your mind's gone blank. Erm, um, you know me so well. All the relevant information for this case can be found in the court record. But, but I can't even find that. It's simple, you can access the court record with a press of the R1 button. Uh, what? Just, just go along with it. It's on that controller in your hand. If you ever find you've forgotten something, just consult that. It's all in there. I just have to press R1, uh, wherever that is, for the court record. Alright, there's no time to lose. Oh, do it now. Okay. This is the list of evidence you've collected. Now try switching to people instead with R1. Okay, can I read this first? <clears throat> Proof that I'm a student at the Imperial Yume University. I always wear it on the collar of my uniform jacket. Yes, I'll be presenting this to everybody I meet, so be ready. Okay, I can't actually check the other thing yet. Kazuma Asugi, 23. You'll find details about the victim in here. When you're done, just press circle to go back. Okay. Kazuma Asugi. A second year at the Imperial Yume University. He's my best friend and despite being a student, a qualified defense lawyer as well. Eugen Mikotova, okay he's 42. So he's 23, 42, a medical school professor at the Imperial Yume University. He's an authority in forensic medicine and Kazuma's mentor. Takatsuchi Aoki, 51, oh he's old. The lead prosecutor of this case who would appear to have little love for the changes the Cultural Reformation has brought about. And I'm assuming the only guy left is the victim, John H. Wilson, 50, 47. The victim in this case, he was a visiting professor of medicine at Yume University from the British Empire. I can't go back to my uh, evidence, can I? Nope, okay. So John H. Wilson, got it. So remember, everything to do with the current case can be found in the court record. Now, you better not keep His Excellency waiting any longer. Go on. Find the victim in the people section of the court record, then press triangle to present it now. Uh, it's you. Okay, now. John H. Wilson. Yes. 
The victim's name was Dr. John H. Wilson. It's moments like that I just want to like select all the wrong answers and see what the heck the dialogue would be because I bet it would be hilarious. Haha. <laughs> -ha. Well, at least you can remember the name of an esteemed member of your own university. Hmm? Dr. Wilson was a visiting professor from England, invited to Yuma University three years ago. Indeed, which is the reason why this case has such a profound implications. The British Empire is at present our country's most valuable foreign ally. Okay. And as most of you will be aware, we have just signed a new treaty together after lengthy negotiations. There can't be anyone who hasn't heard of the Anglo-Japanese Treaty of Friendship and Navigation. And yet, despite these delicate circumstances, the blood of the Englishmen has been split on our soil. You two are both undergraduates at the Imperial Yuma University, are you not? Murdering a professor from the very institution that provides your education, have you no honor? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with this voice, I'm, I'm just having fun with it. But I didn't do it. The case is coming under great scrutiny for our allies on the other side of the world. The court therefore wishes for a speedy resolution to this matter. Hmm. In other words, our feeble government is scared of upsetting England's policy makers. And you are convenient and expendable scapegoat to blame for this crime. So that's why this trial has these unusual peculiarities, is it? Exactly. Our government needs to convict someone as quickly as possible. All because the victim was an Englishman. Ah, yes. Dr. Wilson was an Englishman. In Wilson was an Englishman. But nationalities and treaties won't make any difference for me here. The fact is, I was there at the scene of the crime. Oh dear. Look at the time. I'd better be going. Alright, I'll see you later. I think I'll stay and enjoy this place a little longer. Good idea. After all, it's not every day you get to visit a high-class western restaurant like this. See you in the English class tomorrow then, partner. Okay. Did we, did we kill him here? I think this looks like the place we killed the guy. Or, I keep saying we killed him like we did it. That we're accused of killing him, that he died. The British Empire. Wow, it's incredible to think. Wait. Oh, there he is. <laughs> is he like the only other guy here? I've seen that man at university. I'm sure he's a visiting professor from Great Britain. I don't know his name, but still. I should go and say hello. So I went over to the professor's table and introduced myself to Dr. Wilson. Now then, let me pose my next question to you, Defendant Narohodo. Yes, Your Excellency. How did this professor of, professor of medicine, Dr. John H. Wilson, lose his life? State before the court the cause of death. Okay, hopefully that's in my evidence, because I don't know. The cause of death. Well, obviously that was, um... Shoot, 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 shoot! Ryunosuke. What the freak? Remember that in court, every assertion must be backed up by evidence. By evidence? But how? Find the piece of evidence that shows the professor's cause of death, and select present. Do it now! Well, I only have two options. It's obviously not- it's, it's my badge. That's why he had to die. <laughs> Can you imagine? He was stab- Look how pointy this thing is. <laughs> like, he was stabbed with my badge. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Now, what is this? Postmortem report. Death occurred a little after 2 p.m. and was caused by loss of blood from a gunshot to the chest. Okay, we heard the bang. The bullet did not pass through the victim's body. I'm gonna assume it's this. What happens if I press examine? Okay, I can see it in more detail. John H. Wilson, male British, time of death, 19th of November, shortly after 2 p.m. Cause of death, single bullet fired at close range. 
fatal hemorrhage from pectoral ballistic trauma. No exit wound. Bullet did not pass through the body. So these are specific details that I'm sure we'll need to remember. Or not remember, because we can look at this. But we'll have to keep in mind. Okay. I can't examine my badge. Aw. Okay, so let's present this. Yes! Yes! Um, well... <laughs> According to this document, the victim suffered a hem hemorrhagic de death due to gunshot trauma. Learn to read, you imbecile! That's the post-mortem report, I take it? Sorry, yes, that's right. The, um, post-mortem report. In the West, a doctor dissects corpses to identify the cause of death in an autopsy. But here in Japan, a police officer merely inspects the body and draws conclusions that way. Oh, I see. As long as I'm not going to be tested on any of this later, <laughs> you would fail. No, I'm kidding. I think the point is he knows this stuff, he's just really nervous. And we need an excuse to have a tutorial. That too. This is a so-called... This is a so-called photographic print of the scene of the crime. Okay. You can clearly discern scorch marks around the bullet hole produced by the powder explosion. Okay, so if I remember from, like, past Phoenix Wright games, if there's bullet powder on the corpse, that means, like, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, close range. Or point-blank range. And I think that's what the report said, if I'm not mistaken. In other words, we should assume that the victim was shot at close range. Okay, makes sense. Thank you, Counsel. The court will accept this modern scientific evidence into the record. Okay. Photograph of victim. A photographic print that shows the victim. He was shot from the front of the, in the chest and subsequently died. Okay. Fair enough. So that's a photographic print. Well, that's something I've never seen before. It's clearly superior to a drawing. The detail's incredible. Very well. I am satisfied with your answers. Let us start the trial. What are you doing? Certainly, Your Excellency. So, without further ado, in order to better apprise the court with the facts of the case, the prosecution hereby calls its first witness, who was there at the scene of the crime when it happened. Okay, so there was somebody else. Makes sense. Ugh, this is it then. Who do we got? Is it going to be the killer? That... Hmm. I think it may have worked out what the professor had in mind. The professor? You mean Dr. Mikotova? Yes. Clearly you're the defense lawyer today. Not me. But that doesn't mean... Well, I can still act as your assistant. I... Every good Ace Attorney protagonist needs an assistant. It's usually a cute girl, but... You're good for now. Ah, of course. When he was speaking with me before, he simply said, Kazuma Asagi must not be the defense lawyer in this trial. Right, he can still help, I guess, if that's legal. Ah, what am I kidding? It's legal in every other game. Huh, he really has been sticking his oar in, hasn't he? That, that sounds, okay, I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but it sounds dirty. Maybe, but any help you can give me would be greatly appreciated, Kazuma. Yeah, please, I'm going to need it. <laughs> Well, my first piece of advice is, wait in that crazy look of bewilderment and control the cold sweats. Only if you rein in that crazy headband and control the cold stares first. That headband has a mind of its own. It's doing its thing. You can't tame it. Oh, I love the dialogue in these games. Hey, oh, this is the Edwards. Okay, this guy looks evil. Just gonna say it right off the back. Witness. State your name and occupation for the court, please. Of course. My name is Satoru Hosunaga. I think I butchered that. Hosunaga, I think it was. I am the head waiter at a western-style restaurant called La Carnaval. <coughs> <coughs> um, are you alright? You seem to be coughing up some, er... Uh... Oh, oh, dear. Nothing. You saw nothing. It was just blood. It's a regular occurrence. It doesn't bother me. Well, it really, really should. 
As everyone knows, the capital's southeastern quarter was developed for foreign visitors some years ago. It's become a very fashionable district now, full of hotels to accommodate overseas guests. This grim scene occurred in one of the district's so-called restaurants, an occidental eatery, three days ago. Understood. Hoshinaga-san, you will kindly tell the court everything you can about the incident. At once, sir. Ah, uh, no petty interjections from the aspiring lawyer boy. Please. Oh, um... Aspiring, maybe, but not, but aspiring. <laughs> yeah, you've uh, your the floor is wet. I'm sure. It was just after two p.m. on the day in question. We have a few diners at that time of day. The lunchtime rush was over, and there was only three tables still occupied. That fits in with the memory of it too. There was hardly anyone else in the place. Okay, this is stuff I gotta remember. <coughs> blood it was when I was in the kitchen putting away crockery and cutlery oh there's the gunshot a gunshot rang out so I hurried out to the dining area to see what had happened and there he is I found the victim an English gentleman slumped in his chair and standing immediately beside him gun in hand was the accused university student <laughs> it's always so like I mean, there's always there's gonna be a twist, right? There's gonna be there's gonna be something we learn, some inconsistency or something. But it's always always the setup is always so like, how could it be anyone else? Like, I have the gun in my hand, I'm standing there, of course, right when the witness walks out. <laughs> yes. Um. Hold on, let me just clarify something here. Like, I know he's the only other person we've met so far, but this butler definitely seems like he's probably the killer. <laughs> just saying. But I could be wrong. While I did pick up a gun that I found lying on the floor beside the professor, that I should have left there, I... I didn't shoot him. Oh my gosh, that's what he sounds like. I believe I asked you to refrain from petty interjections. The court wishes to listen to the witness's report of what he saw, you amateur! But... The next time you interrupt at an inappropriate time, you will be penalized, defendant Naruhodo. Um, I'm gonna bring up a health bar, and I will take little chunks out of it every time you interrupt. Don't worry, Ryunosuke. You'll have your chance to fight back. For now, we must just quietly listen to the witness. You know what, I'm gonna... Okay, I know I keep changing his voice, but like I said, I'm giving the butler kind of like the... The butlery, like, kind of deeper British voice. Not deep, but, like, similar to his voice. So I'm just going to give kind of give him kind of like a lower, like, not deadpan-ish kind of voice. I wanted to say. If I may confirm one point, waiter. Standing beside the victim with a gun in his hand was the same man we see here in court today. <coughs> yes, without question. Oh, sorry. Got a little blood on my lip. I see. And apart from the accused, was there anyone else standing beside the victim? Yeah, wipe that up. No. There was no one else around that table but the deceased Englishman and the university student. Huh? Wait, what did he just say? Okay, there was nobody else besides him and me? There was no one else around that table? Come again? Was there, though? What's the matter, Ryanosuke? That's... That's just not right. Liar! When I went over to Dr. Wilson to say hello... Hello! There was a woman sitting opposite him at this table. Hold on. Hold the phone. Really? And that's not something the waiter could have missed. Ooh. I've been warned about interjecting, but still. What should I do? We are going to interject and interject hard. Yes. Just a moment, please. Dr. Wilson wasn't alone that day. I'm sure of it. There was a lady sitting with him at the same table. 
Objection! Dear me, dear me. What are we going to do with you? With your blatant disregard for court proceedings, I'm beginning to wonder if you're not a fraud. Could it be that the accused, this mere student, is not a real lawyer after all? But I'm sure of what I saw. Hosunaga-san, is there any chance you're mistaken? Perhaps your memory of events is hazy. No. Oh, look at that. The deceased gentleman came to dine alone. I... I don't believe it. <clears throat> I actually have a rough plan of the restaurant as it was that day. Please, have a look if you'd like to. Okay. Okay, so that... That, that X is where the... The dead guy is? The Dr. Wilson? Let me see. Ah, sketch of the establishment layout, drawn by yourself, I presume? That's right. I'm afraid I used to, the back of my business card. It was a turbulent situation. However, as you can see, the gentleman in question was seated alone. Well, you're clearly a very conscientious waiter. You're good at your job, I guess. Thank you, sir. The court will take this plan and add it to the court record as evidence. Oh, um, well. What? What are you hiding? Is there a problem? Hand the plan to the court officer at once. Um, of course. Here you are. What was that about? He's been completely calm and collected until now. <coughs> Okay, he's dying. He's about to... He's about to pass out. Certainly, certainly some... Cer ah, something certainly seems <laughs> to have shaken him. There's some alliteration going there. Okay, so he violently coughs when he's, uh... Nervous? Or hiding something? The head waiter's business card, a sketch of the restaurant's layout, is on the back. Calm down, buddy. Here's a cough drop. So, the court has now heard a precis of the case. They're using words I don't know. Yes, at the moment the gunshot was heard in the restaurant. The only person in close proximity to the victim was the defendant on trial today. It would seem we are looking at a black and white case here. That, <laughs> honestly, is exactly what it looks like, but i played enough of these games to know. That's not how it goes. Defendant Naruhodo. Yes, Your Excellency. If you admit your guilt at this stage, the court is willing to look mercifully upon you. In other words, you may have some small reprieve in terms of your inevitable punishment. I call this... Oh, wait. Wait, who is this talking? Oh, oh the, the prosecutor. I call this waiter as an unsworn witness in order to explain the details of the case to the court. But I must warn the defense if you are determined to pursue matters further in this case. Bam! The prosecution has decisive evidence from sworn witnesses who were present at the scene of the crime. Come again? <laughs> oh, how just nervous I feel. What do you think I should do, Kazuma? What do you mean? Well, I'm going to be found guilty one way or another. It seems. Wouldn't it be sensible to plead guilty at this stage and hope for a more lenient sentence? No. Don't give up. Everyone keeps telling me that this trial is unusual about these peculiarities. You said it. Professor Mikotoba has said it, and so has the judge and the prosecution. I'm... I'm scared of what lies ahead if I push this. You got this. As I said from the outset, I believe you're innocent. I trust you. And yet, despite knowing that, you're willing now to throw that trust back in my face. Is that it? What? If, if the accused is in fact innocent, then the defense lawyer is duty-bound to prove that innocence by whatever means necessary. 
Are you just going to abandon that duty? Are you going to give up on yourself? The battle hasn't even begun yet, Uvianosuke. Uh? Yes! T yes, fest slam! The defense pleads not guilty, your excellency. We invite the prosecution to start making empty threats and bring out its witnesses. Yes, finger point! Then we'll see just how decisive this evidence really is. Okay. He's teaching us the good stuff. How to slam our hands on desks. How to point that finger. I like it. Indeed. Prosecutor Ouchie, or Aoki, please continue with proceedings. Tsk. Well, you were warned. The young can be so reckless. You know, many call me a saint, but I can be a devil when I want to be. <laughs> uh, okay. In a few short moments from now, that dumbstruck young mouth of yours will be silenced forever. I'm gonna kill you! The prosecution calls its next witnesses. Very well, officer. Bring forth the witnesses at once. Okay, two of them. Witnesses, kindly state your names and occupations for the court. <coughs> yes, sir. The great Nippon Imperial Army Sergeant. Yes, sir, no, sir. Reporting for duty, sir. Myself, I find employee as a purveyor of fine articles of inquiry from the efflorescence of our nation, Nippon, and conduct my trade from Rasute, a humble premises in the second district, Kyurio Korakuta, at your service. An antique dealer and a soldier. What an unusual pairing! Both of these gentlemen were present at the restaurant. On the day in question, they must be the diners at the table that the waiter mentioned. I'm trying to think, I, obviously like an old man voice. Myself, I habitually take tea of the most exquisite aroma at the establishment in question. Always post noon. I don't know, I don't, I don't really have like a really good old man voice, I guess. I don't know. I might literally have to practice, uh, <laughs> practice his voice or something. I mean, we won't see him again after this short chapter, but I should, I should get one for any old man we run into. And not infrequently, conversed with interested parties regarding the curios for which I make my business. I can't understand a word that old man is saying. <laughs> and he sounds really weird. I know, okay? Get off my case. He's an antique dealer. And it sounds like he's a regular at Le Carnaval. Le Carnaval! He seeks out potential customers who may have an interest in antiques and tries to sell his wares to them. He obviously targets Le Carnaval because it's a high class restaurant with rich clientele. Right, I see. Although, to be honest, that sergeant looks more like he'd be a seller rather than a buyer. Now, you both witnessed the precise moment of this most atrocious incident. Is that correct? Affirmative! The enemy unit was seen attacking the foreigner in what can only be described as an act of war, sir! It was that black uniformed rogue infantryman over there who unloaded his firearm, sir! This man's as impossible to understand as the other. But I'm almost sure I heard a strange noise during that last thing he said. A strange noise? I was too busy shouting to, <laughs> to hear it. So, this is the decisive evidence the prosecution was threatening. The soldier is claiming that he actually saw the precise moment you shot the victim dead. Yes, that is what he is saying. Well, are you starting to feel uncomfortable? Yeah. If I'm honest, I was feeling uncomfortable from the start. <laughs> yeah. Now, the court will hear your formal testimony, please. You will state everything you saw at the precise moment that the incident occurred. Sir, yes, sir. Standing by, ready to report, sir. I heard a baby that time, sir. What the heck was that, sir? 
Right, that was a baby? Is that the sound? Is that the sound they heard before? See like see like a loving dad or something? Does he have a baby with him? Interesting. Hmm. Unsavory memories of a most acerbic afternoon. Okay. So this is new. The only time I remember ever seeing multiple witness on the stand is um it was that late that Professor Layton um and Phoenix Wright crossover game. So I don't know if this will work the same way. I honestly don't even remember how that worked. I played that game a while ago. I was ingesting a regulation beef steak at the restaurant while having a tactical discussion with the old man. So okay, so they were together. Myself, I was extolling the virtues of a particularly fine golden curio to the military gentleman. At the precise moment, a firearm was discharged. I observed the enemy's actions with my own eyes. There's that baby again. Dang it. The black uniformed varsity cadet fired on the English civilian and from the back. The cowardly little weasel. Wait. Okay. Immediately that's suspicious. From the back? I don't think so, sir. I was on my hands and knees investigating the whereabouts of my mysterious absconded precise precious curio. Okay. Well. So you, Sergeant No, sir, actually witnessed the vital moment, somehow. You saw the split second when the defendant fired the weapon at the victim. Yes, sir. Affirmative, sir. The Wicked University Cadet, sir. The cruel and unforgivable enemy. What is that sound, sir? Oh, gosh. Did you take that out before? What times we live in when an English gentleman may be assailed in the broad of light of day. But this is ridiculous. I didn't shoot anyone. Is that really true, Ryanosuke? Yes! All I did was pick up the gun that I saw lying on the floor. Why, I don't know, but I did. After I said hello to Dr. Wilson, I went back to my table and sat drinking some coffee. Then, when I'd finished, I got up from my seat to leave the restaurant. When I noticed an English-made gun next to the chair where the professor was sitting. English-made gun. Okay. If it's an English-made gun, unless any of these people are British, does that mean maybe the gun belonged to him? Like, as in, belonged to the professor? I thought perhaps the professor had dropped it. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. So I bent down and just, as I was picking it up... Bang! Well, if that's the truth, I was obviously a criminal on the scene somewhere. So, so he went to pick up the gun, and the guy and the professor was shot right then and there. How does that even work? Like, how if the gun was the gun, the gun was by the professor, right? So it was obviously left there as probably a red herring, maybe. Unless I'm misinterpreting, but if how could a guy have, or a lady have shot him in close range and run off without? It had to have been the woman then, I would think, if she was there at the table. Well, if that's the truth, there was obviously a criminal on the scene somewhere. We haven't met the lady yet. And somewhere in these two witnesses' testimonies, there's a clue as to who that criminal was. There is? Ryanosuke, you must exercise your right to cross-examine the witnesses. Cross-examine? What the heck is that? I've never done that before in a Phoenix Wright game. As we have heard, Your Excellency, there is no room for doubt in the testimony of these witnesses. The defendant is clearly guilty. It is time to bring this disciple, despicable student, to justice. Certainly. The testimony of the court has just heard eliminates any vestige of doubt. Therefore, it is my grave duty to declare the verdict of this yes. trial. Uh, yes. Uh, I have a question. What in the name of the Emperor is the meaning of this outburst? Ryanosuke, I am, um, I, I mean, the, the defense. Demands its right to cross examine. Please. <laughs> dear me, dear me. Let me guess. The Hachimaki headband boy next door told me to do it. How pathetic. <laughs> huh. How did he know? <laughs> That's exactly what happened. 
The prosecution objects. This is a clear waste of time, even though it is my right. The defendant obviously has no experience. How can he possibly carry out a cross-examination? Objection! The defense is asserting its right to a cross-examination. Whether or not you think he's capable of it is irrelevant. Gulp? Cosmo is so commanding. Very well. Let the defense conduct a cross-examination of the witnesses. Alright. This is where the battle really begins, Ryanosuke. But, I don't even know what I have to do in a cross-examination. I've never played a Phoenix Wright game before. Isn't it obvious? You have to expose the lies in the witnesses' statements. I keep slipping into a British accent. I'm trying to keep it just like a deeper kind of voice. I don't know. You didn't fire the gun, which means that what that soldier said has to be a lie. Well, yes, but it's just a case of proving it. And the key to doing that is evidence. Right. Evidence. Okay. Sure. All you need to do is prevent some decisive and indisputable evidence that proves the witness is lying. Now let's go, Ryunosuke. Don't let them beat you! I will not. That was a wimpy, that was, that was a wimpy, uh, hand slam, whatever you want to call it. Desk slam. All right, then. It's all or nothing. I think I already figured it out. Now, what the witnesses saw, I don't know if we can, we haven't been taught about, um, whatchamacallit. Uh, what, what do they call it? Like, um, you can question them or whatever before presenting evidence. I'm blanking on what you call it. Oh, there's a health bar up there. Okay. Press. That's what it's called. Press. L1 to press. I was investigating a regulation beef steak at the restaurant while having a tactical discussion with, discussion with the old man. Okay, I was extolling the virtues of a particularly fine golden curio to the military gentleman. That, at the precise moment, a firearm was discharged. I observed the enemy's actions with my own eyes. The black uniformed varsity cadet fired on the English civilian and from the back. That's wrong, because we know the bullet was from the front. The cowardly little weasel. I was on my hands and knees investigating the where and whereabouts of my mysteriously absconded precious curio. So that is wrong, so we're gonna present. Let me can I look in my evidence first? So we got the photograph of the victim. Print that shows the victim who shot from the front in the chest and subsequently died. The head writer's business card, a sketch of the restaurant's layout is on the back. I guess it would be that. It specifically says he was shot from the front in the chest and subsequently died. Because, I mean, te technically this also says gunshot wound to the chest. Sometimes it's one of those things where I don't know which it wants me to present. We, presented, we haven't presented this, so let's go with this. Yes. Objection! Yeah, usually the music stops when it's correct. I got something. <clears throat> We're waiting. We're waiting. What is it? Get on with it. What? What are you playing at, cadet? What is the meaning of this subordination? Dusting some photographic print in my mustache? <laughs> what, did I just like sho literally shove it in your face? In... Inconsistency, sir. I mean, yes. There's a clear inconsistency here. What nonsense. What can this friend possibly tell us that we don't already know? Well, obviously, that, um, I know what I want to say, but the words just won't come out of my mouth. Hmm. I think this proves beyond any doubt, Your Excellency, that there is no place for an amateur student here in this grand courtroom. Hmm. Ugh. This is so frustrating. Bang! Oh, please. Surely this doesn't require an explanation. It couldn't be more plain. To spell it out would be an insult to the court. Kazuma? What? What are you talking about? It's apparent from a single glance at the photograph. Print presented by the defense. 
that there's a clear discrepancy here with the sergeant's statement. Am I gonna have to point it out? What? Sergeant? Yes, sir, no, sir. Yes, sir. What, sir? The statement you just made was this. The black uniform varsity could have fired on the English civilian and from the back, the cowardly little weasel. Yes, sir. Affirmative, sir. I witnessed the crime with my own military grade eye, sir. Yes. But no, that just can't be. And why not, cadet? Because. Because, uh... Because? <laughs> Take a close look at the print. The victim, Dr. Wilson, died from a bullet wound to the chest. Ah! Sergeant, according to your witness statement, the culprit shot the victim from behind. And that is the obvious discrepancy here. Well, how do you explain it? Oh, okay. There's the baby. Well, uh, uh, uh. Okay. I need an explanation. I don't even think I read any of that. I think he was just making weird noises. Uh, what? Uh, what was that? Something just popped up from behind his back, but he pushed it down again. Certainly, there's a clear discrepancy with the facts here. Would you not agree, Sergeant Nosa? Yes, sir. At this juncture, that would appear to be indisputable. Oh, there he is again. Until the moment I heard the fire on discharge, my eyes were... There he is. Hello there, cutie. <laughs> Firmly fixed on the delicious La Carnival, La Carnival steak, sir. What? The last testimony the court heard was proven one thing, beyond all reasonable doubt. This witness, Sergeant Yesa Nosa, did not see the defendant firing a gun at all. Uh, that's... That's absurd. I think the conclusion we must draw is simple. There is no place for an amateur prosecutor here in this grand courtroom. Inconsistency, seer. There's been a complete turnabout in the mood of this trial. Just from that one discrepancy? Now we are on a roll. So this is what being an ace attorney is all about. I feel it flowing through my veins. But, but I definitely saw him. That university cadet, that, that university cadet there. He was pointing the firearm directly at the victim's back. Yes. But I never fired the gun. I was going to kill him, but somebody beat me to it. Wait, what? No, nothing. Forget I said that. All I did was pick it up off the floor. Hmm. And you, old man. You didn't see the moment the victim was shot either. Uh. Myself, I've already been quite clear. The gunshot interested me not. I was far too busy on the floor. Oh, yes. You were looking for your Koban coin, weren't you? Indeed. The prized Hoei era Koban. Hunting around under the table, I was... In case mayhap it had fallen there. And then it happened. Bang! You heard the gunshot, you mean. Indeed I did. But I heeded it not for I was concerned only with finding my absconded Hoei treasure. Nothing could distract me. Out of interest. Did you find the coin in the end? No. Hmm, I see. That lamentable day, the precious Huawei Koban was lost to me. No doubt. Some unscrupulous... Wait a minute. Was that him talking? Yeah, that was him talking. Some unscrupulous scoundrel pocketed the prize coin from... Oh, you know what I think? Could it be the kid? I was thinking, I was thinking him. But maybe the kid 
grabbed it. The little baby. No, so it looks suspicious though. As I'm sure everyone present is aware, this case demands a swift and decisive revolution resolution. Our government has promised to send a full report to Great Britain by telegraph this afternoon. Nevertheless, the witness testimony the court has just heard was inconclusive. No matter how subservient our government feels it must be to the British, it would be unforgivable to deliver a verdict on this trial right now. Hmm. What is your position, Prosecutor Aoki? Haha. <laughs> Were we not, Your Excellency? The defendant may have fled a tiger at the front gate, but he will find a wolf at the back. My witnesses have further testimony to make. Explain. Upon hearing their next statements, it will become abundantly clear that there is only one person who could possibly have committed this despicable crime. The equally despicable defendant, Ryanosuke Naruhodo. What? He really seems to have a despicable opinion of you, doesn't he? Ah! Yeah. Very well. The court invites the witnesses to testify again. You will thoroughly explain the reasoning behind the prosecution's allegations. Is that clear? As clear as clear could glass, Your Excellency. Oh no, wait, why am I doing that voice? Yes, sir! At once, sir! A waiting test signal to testify, sir! Um, excuse me, but there's something or someone peeking out over your shoulder, I think. Affirmative! The newest member of the Nosa family to rise up through the ranks, sir! Name? Ido. Hmm. It would seem those straps are a sign of the sergeant being too strapped to afford a nanny. Ido! Tear shot! Your father is about to quell the enemy! Watch and learn, my boy! Ah, oh, so cute! Uh, they always have such wacky characters and wacky character animations. Ew, that little snot on your nose there. Okay, another witness testimony. The true culprit. Even if what I saw wasn't the precise moment the firearm was discharged, it's almost the same thing. Yes, pointing his gun at the foreign man, he was that young lad in black. That much I myself did see. Furthermore, a visual search of the premises at the time confirmed that there were only personnel present. Indeed, alone he was the Englishman, dining all by himself. Therefore, no one other than the black uniformed cadet could have dispatched the Englishman. Over and out! Hmm. These testimonies are certainly yes. compelling. Wait, that's, that's nonsense! The victim, Dr. Wilson, wasn't alone at all. Please, enough of these outbursts already. But there was a woman. There was a young woman at his table. You must have seen her. Everyone there must have seen her. <laughs> They're like, nope. If you call yourself a lawyer, then you will respect the rules of the court and speak accordingly. We are not here to listen to your fantasies. Ugh. It is evident beyond all reasonable doubt that the victim was alone at the time of the incident. The prosecution has photographic evidence of this fact. Is this a photo- oh, sorry. Is this a photographic print of the scene of the crime council? Okay. Indeed. Of the table at which the victim was dining, taken by an investigator immediately after the incident. As can plainly be seen, there is only one place set. Certainly. Based on the appearance of this print, it would be reasonable to conclude that the victim was not in the company of anyone else. Ah. This doesn't make any sense. The court will add this new photographic evidence to the record. Crime scene photograph. A bottle of carbonated water and a steak lunch can be seen on the victim's table. I don't understand. What's going on here? It's just not possible that nobody else saw that woman. The waiter before said the same thing. He maintains that Dr. Wilson came to the restaurant alone as well. 
That's not true. I, I saw her. I swear that I saw a woman with him. It would seem that we were able to telegraph the report to Great Britain on time after all. Sorry, Great Britain on time after all. The witness testimonies we have just heard leave no further room for doubt. There are very sensible political times, as we all know. The ink is still fresh on the treaty with Great Britain. To think that I, Takatsuchi Aoki, would have contributed to the uh, amity of these two great empires is an honor. That's always the look. That's always the pose when he feels defeated. He feels there's no hope. How can this be happening? The judge is ready to rule. Stand tall, Ryanosuke. It's not over yet. Yep, it's him. What? What do you say is true? Then there's something going on here behind the scenes. And now is your chance to expose it. To draw out the truth in your cross-examination. I... I don't know, Kazuma. The defense is entitled to cross-examine the witnesses. But make it quick, understood? Tsk. Rules can be so unbending at times. Ugh. Okay. The true culprit. Even if what I saw wasn't the precise moment the firearm was discharged, it's almost the same thing. Yes, pointing his gun at the foreign man, he was. That young lad in black, that much I myself did see. Furthermore, a visual search of the premises at the time Confirm that we were the only personnel present. Indeed, alone he was the Englishman, dining all by himself. Therefore, none other than the black uniformed cadet could have dispatched the Englishman over and out. Let's yes. press him on that. You must have noticed someone else at Dr. Wilson's table. There was a lady there. As you have been at pains to point out time and again, I feel I'm growing a callus in my ear. And yet, no one else appears to have even caught a glimpse of this woman. Ugh. If only there'd been more people dining there at the time, then someone else would have noticed her. Unfortunately, it was already past 2 p.m. when it happened. The quiet time between lunch and dinner in any restaurant. I know. Of course, the place was almost empty. It's what you'd expect. Certainly. 2 p.m. is neither here nor there in terms of a time to eat. I wonder if there was a reason why the victim was eating at the time of day and why he was alone. Yes, Your Excellency, there was indeed a reason. There was? This was found in the victim's jacket pocket. What is that, Counsel? It is a medical report card, Your Excellency. It would seem that the victim had an appointment at a clinic Prior to visiting the restaurant. Hmm. Hota Clinic. Yes, there would indeed appear to be an entry for the date in question. That sounds like the Hottie Clinic. 19th November, noon to past 1pm. Hmm. The very day of the incident. So, the victim went for a late lunch following his appointment. The explanation couldn't be more simple. The prosecution felt no need to submit this evidence before, as it really has no bearing on the case. Interesting. I wonder. What do you think, Ryunosuke? Huh? Well, it's hard to see how it could be related, really. Remember, you can request for it to be entered into the court record as evidence if you think it could be useful. So they asked for Dr. Wilson's medical report card to be submitted as evidence or not? Um... I mean, is there any harm for it to be? Yes. If I may, I'd like to ask for that medical report card to be submitted as evidence, Your Excellency. On what grounds? Um, am I going to get penalized? The court has already heard conclusive witness testimony. I didn't think it was important, but... I, I just want to see if it hurt at all. Not to mention that the victim's movement prior to his arrival at the restaurant will have no concern. Objection. Whether or not they have concern is up to us to decide. We have a right to explore all possible avenues. 
I beg your pardon. You have no authority to refuse a perfectly valid request for the submission of evidence. Okay, so they are going to submit it. Very well, the court will grant the defense's request. <laughs> Youngsters these days are forever asserting their rights. It's a most disturbing trend. Officer, kindly add the victim's medical report card to the court record. Okay, so it, it did add it as evidence. A medical report card from Hota Clinic that was found in the victim's pocket. What we need right now is new clues. That's what we got. We have to explore things from every possible angle. Even if they don't seem relevant at first. Right, I hear you. Hmm. <laughs> you can conspire to prolong this trial as much as you like, but it's the day after the festival already for you. Or perhaps you've forgotten that these witness testimonies leave no room for doubt. Feel free to reiterate for the accused, Kurakuta-san. Okay. Alone he was. Okay, so I just... So you actually saw that with your own eyes, did you? The victim, Dr. Wilson, dining alone? That I did. Forgive me for the position I place you in. So the testimonies of the old man, the soldier, and the waiter all agree on that point. Isn't that interesting? And let us not forget the incontestable evidence we have to support their statements as well. As can clearly be seen, there is only a single beef steak on the victim's table. A meal for one. No. The antique dealer, the sergeant, and the waiter who testified before. It's not impossible that they're all lying. But if so, then why? If I'm perfectly honest, I have absolutely no idea. Hmm. I really don't know. So I am like, I'm trying to kind of think and like do the voice at the same time. Uh, so I'm trying to kind of think. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not really sure what um could be going on. Press him on this. Yes. Why aren't you telling the truth? What? What did you say, cadet? I clearly remember. There was a woman sitting across the table from the professor. Perhaps one of you might not have noticed. But there's three of them that don't notice. But for both of you to have failed to see the professor's dining companion? It's just not possible. Now see here? This makes me think that they're maybe purposefully pretending she wasn't there. Unfortunately for you, Defendant Narohodo, it's not just a case of these two witnesses alone. Sorry? The waiter, right? The waiter, whose testimony the court had earlier, clearly stated the same thing. He also said that the victim was alone. That's right. Precisely, in other words, you are the sole proponent of this phantom lady. But, but I... If such a woman were indeed present at the scene, the prosecution demands to see proof. And if no such proof exists, the prosecution demands that no further mention of this phantom woman be made. It is a blatant waste of the court's time. There's nothing I can say to that. Ha 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 ha! Okay, so this is the ending. Excellent work, Ryunosuke. We've gleaned some new information. Now. Well, yes, but I don't feel like it changes much. I can't see that it brings any real discrepancies to light. I wouldn't be so sure. Let me see that medical report card you got before. Oh, you mean this? Yes, this is a brand new piece of evidence. But perhaps we should examine it in a little more detail. How exactly? 
You'll notice that some pieces of evidence can bear a magnifying glass. Oh, okay. I actually haven't been checking my evidence as I get them. I really should. Press X and you can take a closer look at the piece in question. Okay, so use the right stick to move it. To rotate the evidence in all directions and examine it from all angles. By using left, 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 left. Left stick, rather. Okay, I can move the cursor around. I get it. I gotcha. You can move the crosshairs around to hunt for clues that may have been missed before. If the crosshairs start to pulsate, press X to investigate further. So, partner, I think you should take a closer look at this medical report card. See if there isn't something new to be learned by examining it in more detail. Alright, I'll see what I can do. I need to use the right stick and the left stick and X to inspect any areas of the evidence that look suspicious. I don't know what any of that means. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so here it is. Oh, so it just took us right to it. Okay. Okay. Name, Mr. John Wilson, Hota Clinic. It says Hota Clinic on this medical report card. I hate clinics. Almost as what they hate hospitals and surgeries. <laughs> Aren't they all the same? When I was five, I caught the only cold I've ever had in my life. And I remember, even though I felt awful already, I had to have this hideous injection in my right arm. I'm not a fan of needles either. Brr. I'll never forget it. Never in my whole life. Almost as bad as, you know, today, where I'm accused of murder. Most people give their right arm to have had only one cold in their whole life. Yeah, that's not a- that's not bad. <laughs> anyway, I don't think this is a clinic where they treat people for illnesses like that. Let's keep looking for clues. We don't want to miss anything. Check the back. What's this? Oh, it's a dentist. Hota Clinic. Date. None. Record number. Blah, 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 blah. 372857. Let's see what this is about. So it's a dentist. Looks like this medical report card was first issued quite some time ago. It's probably a record of a long-term treatment. That's why. With a family doctor, I imagine. Well, I can't imagine going to a doctor. I mean, as long as I'm alive, I'm never consulting one. Never! Well, if you were dead, there'd be no point. So you don't like doctors, then? Why would you? They make you drink horrible-tasting medicine. They give you painful injections. And then they demand lots of money from you for the privilege. All when you're at your lowest ebb. They are monsters. You sound like a model patient. <laughs> With a bad case of stubbornness, no less, for which the only cure is very bitter medicine, indeed. Uh, healthy curiosity. Okay, I think that's everything. Oh, wait, wait. You can open it. What's this? What's inside? Okay, I'm assuming this is all the same thing. Let's have a look. This is some kind of medical history. Ah, and there's an entry for the day the professor was killed. Extraction of molar with topical anesthesia. Extraction of molar? You mean he had a tooth taken out? It would seem so. so okay, just before the incident. He'd had a bad tooth removed. Perhaps they used laughing gas. That's the most modern practice in the West for pain relief. So he was hopped up on laughing gas? Interesting. Yes, I've heard of this anesthesia. Although it's hard to believe there's anything that can actually stop you feeling pain. Uh, there's a cautionary note from the medical practitioner as well. Strictly no food or drink besides water for three hours post-procedure. Oh. Until anesthetic effects have passed. Really? Sound like information worth bearing in mind? Okay. A record of dental work. On the day of the murder, the victim had undergone dental treatment and been prohibited from eating or drinking anything but water. With this new information, the meaning of that one particular statement totally changes. So, I think it's time we listen to the testimony again, don't you? Definitely. 
Let's do it. Okay, I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay, I don't think it has anything to do with that. Okay, nothing to do with that. A visual search of the premises. Confirm that there was the only personnel present. Okay. This last one? No one other than the black uniform cadet could have dispatched the Englishman over and out. Okay, let me say something. I don't want to present anything. Okay. No, 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 okay. I just want to make sure I'm not missing something completely obvious. Oh, yeah, this one. Dining all by himself. He shouldn't have been dining, right? I guess that's I guess that's the point, right? That's the only thing that says anything about eating. Oh, you know what that can mean? So they pointed out in this picture, right? I don't want to present it. I don't want to accidentally present it. That there was one... That there was one place. But there's a chance he could have been there and not eating. Right? He could have just he could have just been there to meet this lady. The lady was eating and he couldn't eat. Maybe that's the point. Okay, that's what. But it's got to be that dining all by himself. So present the medical report card. Yes. There we go. Sounds fishy to me. Um. Um. Well, I think. Um. About what are you wittering, lad? Call yourself a lawyer? I wish I could. But first and foremost here, I'm the accused. Leonosuke. Everyone stumbles on their words occasionally. Under the circumstances, I wouldn't worry about it. Thanks, Kazuma. I could see it quite clearly in that course examination you just carried out. When you raised your hand straight up like that, so purposefully, you knew exactly what it is you wanted to say. He's had lots of practice. Don't feel like you have to choose your words carefully. You probably should, since, you know, you're a lawyer. Just say what you're thinking. Got it. Alright, and thanks for the advice. We got this. Yes, deep breaths. Get that confidence back. Kurakuda-san, this is a medical report card belonging to the victim. Oh, I see. And? I don't see. What of it, boy? Comparing what is written on this report card with your witness statement... <laughs> something clearly doesn't add up. Objection! Dear me, dear me. Have you forgotten my words so soon, you amateur? Sorry, what? You are not to interrupt court proceedings with your amateurist drivel. But... Let's see if I can explain in words you might understand. It was after 2 p.m. in the afternoon when the victim was murdered at your restaurant. Whatever he may or may not have done before that time is completely irrelevant. Grr. But, but that's, um. Remember, Leonosuke, you don't have to use clever language or fancy words. Just make your point. Your Excellency, I believe we're finished here. There is surely no need to prolong this trial further. Hmm. The witness testimonies the court has heard have been clear and concise. Not while I'm standing, there's plenty of holes. This medical report card has no bearing on the matter at all. For a simple reason that there is no one else besides this pale-faced pupil who could possibly have perpetuated blah 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 blah. This medical report card has nothing to do with the case. Nonsense. Do you really believe that? What? That outburst have petrified me, boy. Of course I believe it. How could it possibly be irrelevant? Perhaps because Hota Clinic, which issued the report card, is a dental clinic. A dental clinic? Is that supposed to mean something to me? Ah, uh, it should. Perhaps if I told you that the victim had just had a tooth extracted. What's this now? And furthermore... If I told you that as a result, the victim had been forbidden from eating. Yes, so why would he be there? Alone. Just, just what are you trying to say, cadet? 
get orders not to eat. So what? It's all written up in here. No food or drink other than water for three hours. Post procedure while anesthesia wears off. What? No, that, that can't. Kurakuda-san. What, boy? What? As you just heard, when he was killed sometime shortly after 2 p.m., the victim couldn't have been eating anything at all. No. Additionally, there's more. You have assured the court with unwavering self-confidence that the victim was dining alone. But that cannot possibly be the case. Sure. <laughs> So like, are they lying or, I mean, it, I mean, it might just be that they're mistaken, but because the victim, as we now know, just had one of his teeth extracted and was still experiencing the effects of the anesthetic. Ah! <laughs> Expertly done, partner. Now you see the baby. What, what is this nonsense, you little upstart? These are baseless accusations. Just, just look at this photographic evidence. Like I said, he might not have been eating. You can clearly see the plate of food at the victim's table. Objection. Use your head. That's the very discrepancy we're talking about. Well, can't you follow the logic? I can, I think. How? How dare you? I think it's fair to say that the tables in this restaurant case have turned. <laughs> I get it. Jokes. Wouldn't you agree, Ryanosuke? Hmm? Yes, most definitely. I totally understand what you mean. So having just undergone some dental surgery, the victim was unable to eat. Which leaves one very crucial conundrum. Who in fact was eating the picture of beef steak? It's gotta be the woman. It's gotta be the lady. The court will hear the opinion of the defense on this new puzzle. I assume you're ready, counsel? Council? Oh, that, that means me, doesn't it? <laughs> Alright, the answer to this question is going to be pivotal. This is the start of your turning this trial around. Show them what you're made of. You got this. Got it. So, um... The person eating the steak at the victim's table must have been... The, and, and as of yet, unknown third... <laughs> it was me! That doesn't incriminate me at all. Now, it's got to be this one. The third party, the lady. Obviously, it can only have been someone else who was sitting at the professor's table. It's got to be. You will not let this go, will you? There was no such person. There was, because I saw her. When the incident occurred, we know the victim couldn't have been eating anything. Yet we have evidence of a half-eaten steak on his table. Therefore, the only logical conclusion is that there was somebody else there eating it. I mean, there's also the chance that he could just, you know, be blowing caution to the wind and be like, I'm not supposed to eat, but I'm hungry and this is my favorite restaurant. <laughs> but let's go with that. Urgh. We have strong evidence to support our assertion. It's clear that these witness testimonies are unreliable. If the court decides to push through a ruling at this stage, we will lodge a formal complaint with the Ministry of Ju Justice and pursue a fair retrial. Relentlessly, I will cut you down. Kazuma, are you insane? You, you would take on the government? Don't worry, counsel. I have no issue with you. What do you mean? I have issue with them. Those two witnesses on the stand. Yeah, they've been they've been acting like they've like like they probably have noticed she was there, but they're hiding that fact. What are you talking about? We have demonstrated with evidence that the victim was not alone. So, if it now turns out that the two of you deliberately lied when giving your testimonies, obviously you will be charged with perjury. Perjury? And since this is a murder trial, you will also be deemed complicit in the killing. Ooh, that's not good. Complicit in m murder? 
No. Yeah, that's right. So start talking. No, no. Negative. There. There's no mention of this at the tactical meeting. Blow the fan, boy. I just was following orders. That's right. As the man says. Just say you never saw the gentlewoman. That's what they uh, told us. Oh, crap. Nice one, mister. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. What? So they were told not to say anything about her. He said that's what they said. Talking about the government. What did you just say, Kurakuda-san? Oh. Um. N -n -n no. You were just following orders? No, hold on, lad. I was, um... Say you never saw the gentlewoman. Grr, you imbecile! When you say gentlewoman, do you mean... You saw the victim with a lady from overseas? What? Attention. What? What is the meaning of all this? These witnesses give false statements? Is this true, you pair? Just one. Just one simple slip of the tongue. Uh, yeah, you're busted. Order, order. Counselor, explain what is going on. So that, that puts my... It's painfully clear now you try to present the, prevent these witnesses from telling the truth. Absolutely not. The prosecution knows nothing of this. Then who's behind this? Who tried to make you keep your mouth shut? W well, um... That's classified. Oh, quit it! Ow! I... Quit talking my mustache! So you're prepared to be tried a conspirator to this murder, are you? You... You wouldn't. This can't be happening. Ryanosuke, judging from the way they're reacting to this, I'd say they were sworn to silence by someone with considerable influence. However, I don't believe Ouchie had any idea about it. I feel like I'm pronouncing his name different every time. I keep saying Aoki and Ouchie. I'm gonna call him Ouchie. I mean, to wield that kind of influence, there are only a handful of possibilities. It could only have been the government, the military, or, or the police, I suppose. Well, any ideas about who might be behind this? If we can affirm who tried to silence these witnesses, then we can continue our pursuit. Hmm. The government would make sense, so we need to name whoever was that tried to make the witnesses keep their mouths shut. Of course, we'll need evidence before we make any firm accusations. Evidence that proves whoever was really did wield his or her power here. But how? How can we possibly... Remember how we made progress before. Before. We examined this piece of evidence in more detail and found a new clue as a result. Okay, is there something else we can examine? Oh yes, that's right. Well, that's not the only piece of evidence we have, is it? You're right. I need to examine my badge. <laughs> and make sure there's nothing we've missed. Okay. There's no time to lose. I want answers. If it's proven that these witnesses have been manipulated, I assure you the penalty will be severe. Please, wait. Your Excellency. I had no idea about any of this. I swear to every Shinto god. I knew nothing. And what does the defense have to say about all this? Hmm? Um, well, Your Excellency. Ugh. No time to think. I'm just going to have to close my eyes and shout out the first name that comes into my head. I want to make sure I have time to... Because I said I have to re-examine some pieces of evidence. Oh, I actually can examine this. Ah, the symbol of Yume University. Every student wears this pin with pride. It's funny, but most emblems seem to be either round or rectangular. I like the spike design. Even though it doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> it's good for stabbing people. Although... It does cause problem. 
Lots of students end up cutting their fingers on their badges. Perhaps this idea of one of the founders. A sharp pin for a sharp mind or something. Maybe. Anything else to examine or... My personal student number is engraved on the back here. If you lose your pin, they won't accept you as a UMA student at the university. You may not come in. <laughs> wow. This game loves its puns. You may not come in, they say. Of course, you can get a new pin made if you can just tell them your number. I've actually lost mine twice already. But I still don't know my student name number by heart. I always say to myself, I mustn't forget to write it down somewhere. But then I forget not to forget that. <laughs> Oh, Ryu Hodo, you silly nugget. Okay. So we've looked at this. Oh, we can use a magnifying glass. Oh, that's cool. I don't know if that's... I don't know if there's anything on him that's useful. This is the business card. This plan of the restaurant raises a number of questions, I think. Definitely. It's supposed to show the relative position of everything in the moments following the incident. But there's nothing to show the woman you say you saw there. Exactly, and that's not all. Look here in the upper left where it says kitchen. Okay. Hmm. Oh yes, what of it? No one would use those complicated characters to write kitchen. Especially not if they were in a hurry. Hmm. I'll have to take your word on that one. Don't exact, can't exactly understand it. You mean you don't remember those characters yourself, don't you? Study harder, Ryanosuke. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So, it, it, this is like it's gonna say the same thing, right? Okay, yeah, okay. Can I turn it around? What's on the back? More writing I can't understand. Well, that's unexpected. What is it? Look. Do you see it says the witness's name here? Satoru Hosunaga? Well, yes. Business cards do tend to show the person's name. That's sort of the point. It's not the name that's unexpected. It's his job title. His job? Oh! Chief Inspector Satoru Hosunaga Primary Criminal Investigation Division Imperial Police Bureau. Oh. So he's not just a professor. He's he's with the police. He's an inspector. What on earth? I have no idea. But let's face it. The police have a lot of power and influence. If they're wielding it somehow here. Ooh, we learn new information. A sketch of the restaurant's layout is on the back. On the front, it's stated that Hosunaga Sound is a police inspector. So I got I gotta really check everything when I get it. Whenever I get a new piece of evidence, see if I can examine it and get additional info. Okay, so this is the picture with the steak. Again, I don't know if there's anything I can't see myself. And then this we already looked at, right? So that might have been the new information I needed. Here we go. Things are getting real. Besides the prosecution, the only person with the necessary influence to manipulate the witness is... Okay, so it's obviously not them. The head waiter of the European-style restaurant La Carnival. Who's serving there on the day... Oh! I'm an idiot. Okay. I don't know if I said... I was In my head, I was thinking the victim... He was an undercover... No. He's the one who wrote the... Uh, he's the one who wrote the map, right? So, this guy... Right, Satoru Hosunaga. This is the guy that's an undercover cop. It's gotta be him. So. Yes. There we go. Well, surely that would be Satoru Hosunaga-san. Hosunaga-san? The waiter who took the stand earlier. Objection. Okay, we have, we have clear evidence to show them. Poppycock! What possible reason would the waiter have to make these witnesses give false testimony? Not to mention the fact that even a head waiter could not possibly have that level of influence. For once, I would agree with you. If, that is, the man truly were a waiter. What? If he truly were? 
Come on, Ryanosuke. Time to hit this court with the truth. The truth about Satoru Hosunaga son's real identity as proven by this evidence. Okay, the evidence we just saw. This one. Is a police inspector. Let's do it. Yes. The plan of the restaurant sketched by the man in question. Hmm. I agree it shows a great deal of attention to detail, but I'm not sure we can conclude anything. Sorry, Your Excellency. That's the back of the card. It's the back of the back of the card that's of interest. <laughs> the back of the back of the back of the back. I beg your pardon? Or, or perhaps I should have said the front? Yeah, that would have <laughs> that made more sense. Yes, it's the front of the back of the card. That's where the telling detail is. Just look at the other side. <laughs> Would somebody please explain what this overexcited student is trying to say? hosanaga sans gets the plan of the restaurant on the reverse side of his business card. The front of that business card reveals the man in question's profession. His true profession. The waitress profession? But that surely... Good, good gracious! That's right, Your Excellency. The card reads, Chief Inspector, Primary Criminal Investigation Division, Imperial Police Bureau. What? The, the, the waiter is... a police detective? I... I haven't heard any mention of this before. Why haven't I heard any mention of this before? The Imperial Police Bureau has immense power. Absolute power, as far as regular citizens are concerned. Okay, so... So witnesses there in the stand. Was it in fact the waiter who gave you your orders? Was it he who told you not to mention that you'd seen the foreign gentlewoman at the scene? The question is, who is she? Is she like an undercover agent or something? Um, well, and we still don't know the motive either, like why kill the professor in the first place? Hold it! Oh, it didn't ha Is it a new person? Oh, it's the waiter. Eh, Inspector Hosunaga! I was worried something like this may happen. The moment you asked me to submit my sketch as evidence, I realized there was a po- Ah, that's right! He was all nervous. I realized there was a possibility. Those courts will take this plan and add it to the court record as evidence. Oh, um, well... Is there a problem? Hand the plan to the court officer at once. Um, of course. Here you are. Yes, I remember now. He did act strangely when the judge asked him to hand over his business card. I strive to carry out all investigations flawlessly. It's my guiding principle. But I let myself be distracted when I made that sketch. It was an unusually careless mistake. So, you mean to say, you really are a detective? That's what the paper says. No denying it. But why would a detective be working as a restaurant waiter? Ah, of course, your salary must be... I was working under... <laughs> I was working undercover. Undercover? Yes, I love the music here. It's kind of epic. There have been a series of incidents at the restaurant re recently. In order to investigate, I decided to get a job there as a waiter, working undercover. Incidents at the restaurant? What kind of incidents? Huh, <laughs> you silly boy. That would be classified police information, which I'm not at liberty to divulge. However, I can state categorically that there are unrelated to this case of homicide. Hmm. Very well then, Inspector Hosunaga, but you will elaborate on one point for the court. Of course, Your Excellency. We have just heard new information from the two witnesses beside you. That at the time of the shooting, there was in fact another person present at the victim's table. If that is indeed true, clearly you would also have been aware of this person's presence, having served at the table in question. That's right, you would have seen her. 
However, your testimony did not allude to this other diner. Therefore, I am led to assume that in your professional capacity as a police officer, you require these witnesses to be in agreement. Would that be correct? <coughs> correct, Your Excellency. Unbelievable! Hmm. As I suspected. You are a liar! <laughs> Bang! I just shot you. As soon as I heard the gunshot, I ran out of the kitchen to see what had happened. The victim sat slumped in his chair and beside him, gun in hand, stood the accused student. Sitting opposite the victim at the same table was a young lady, whom I suggested to be an English woman. So the truth comes out. I am immediately sealed off the restaurant and reported the incident to the bureau. It was then that I received some special orders. Special orders? You mean to say, remove the English woman from the scene at once. Once. Why though? It was made clear that the English woman's presence at the restaurant was to be concealed. She must be somebody of importance, like an agent. Those were my orders. But what if this English woman was the killer? I think it would be in everyone's best interest not to pursue that idea. I will pursue the truth. The Empire views the friendly terms of its relationship with Britain more highly than anything at the moment. An Englishman has been murdered on our soil. To name an English woman as the primary suspect. Well, without irrefutable evidence, that would be completely out of the question. So that's the reason for the disappearance of the phantom woman in this case. But, it's not right. Hmm. So it's all to avoid an incident, um, international conflict. Or to ruin their, uh, reputation with, uh, with Britain. One possibility does spring to mind. What do you mean, Kazuma? Yuma University is currently hosting a number of exchange students from Great Britain. And I'm fairly certain that one of them, studying in the medical facilities faculty's research laboratory, is a young Englishwoman. Ooh, the plot thickens. What? You're a shrewd man. Man. I can see why you're the chosen candidate for the overseas study tour. You mean... When I removed the woman from the scene of the crime, I thought it prudent to check her identity first. Then the court demands that you name the lady in question at once, Inspector. The English woman sitting at the university professor's table was a certain Miss Jezeli Brett. Jezeli Giselle? Don't know. She is indeed a foreign student studying in the research laboratory at Yuma University's medical faculty. What? What is happening here? I admit that under orders from the police bureau, I erased all evidence of this lady's presence at the scene. And ordered these witnesses to make no mention of her in their testimonies. It must now be up to your excellency to decide how to deal with the situation. Very well, my thoughts on the matter are as follows. Thus far, the case presented to the court has been underpinned by a particularly critical premise. Namely, that the victim was dining alone. Which we know is not true. Or, I guess we don't know, but... However, we've now discovered that this premise is false. It would be a desecration of our justice system to ignore the truth and give a ruling at this point. But, but, your excellency! That would mean missing the new deadline of a ruling in order to send the telegraph report to Great Britain. Our own government will surely be very displeased by such actions. Calm yourself, counsel. I will not allow the government of our country or any other to influence the proceedings of my court. Uh. Inspector Hosonoga. Yes, sir. 
You will locate this Jezzeny Brett and escort her to the courtroom with the utmost urgency. At once, Your Excellency. But, but that means you'll be going against the special orders you were given from the police bureau. Does he have a choice? As I said before, it is my guiding principle to carry out all investigations flawlessly. Okay, so he must be, he might be a principal guy after all. I thought he might be like the, really corrupt. Maybe he is, maybe he's not. So it won't be a problem. <coughs> <coughs> Nothing will get in my way. I still want to know what's wrong with you. Court will adjourn briefly. Finally, the prosecution must call the English student Jocelyn Brett to the witness stand. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Your Excellency! Good. Then we'll have a 30 minute recess before reconvening. Dang, to be continued. Our first to be continued. That was a lot longer than I thought it would be. I'm coming up on 2 hours and 20 minutes for this recording. Okay. I guess we're going to end things there for now. So things are really sp sp spicing up. Whew. I got to say, I really need a break. That This might be split into two episodes because that was kind of long. That was pretty long. Longer than I thought. So I'm going to have to split this into two episodes. Whew. The big problem is I my voice was like, is getting shot. I don't know if, it's, if you can hear it in the recording, if it's coming across, but my throat is on fire. I don't know if I was just going a bit too hard with some of the voices. We have to take it easy. But I've been, I've been like coughing and like clearing my throat a lot because I'm like, I feel it's like tickle in my throat. Uh, anyway, um, I might just maybe have to do shorter sessions overall. My plan was to try and like do sessions, you know. Get to it. Get to two. Get to the next two. Be continued and so on and so forth. But if they're going to be that long, either that or I might maybe have to drop the voice acting or, you know, go easy on it. I don't know. I'll have to think it over. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you uh, if you like the voice acting, if you think like you know it worked and you want to keep me to keep doing it, or if you're like, no, that's cringe. I'd rather you know just just. Just use your normal voice and just re read, read with enthusiasm, but don't voice act. Whatever, I'm I'm up for I'm up for you know I want to hear your opinions on the matter. But yeah, as far as the episode itself, like what happened, it's a good good opening. So you got these, so you got this foreign woman, who is meeting with the pr professor for whatever reason. It might make sense. I mean, if if uh, she's a student at the same school, that they'd have some kind of relationship. Um. I don't mean that kind of relationship. <laughs> Just like they, they know each other, maybe. You know, professor and student. Then, you know, we don't know why they were meeting. We don't know what they were talking about yet. That's still up in the air. You know, it's obvious, pretty obvious she's the one who shot uh, him, unless there's some kind of other twist. But it seems likely that she, the one who shot him. Um, and yeah, the, wit the two witnesses and the waiter, they were all covering it up. And the two witnesses were ordered to cover it up by the, the first witness. I mean, ah, oh man. So, as always, these things, things are heating up. And now we're gonna, they're going to call her to the stand. So we're going to get to meet her. Which means I'll need to have a... She actually is British. I'll have to see if I can do a, a, a female British voice. But like I said, this will probably be two episodes. Because, yeah, this is over two hours and 20 minutes. That's a long episode, so I'll probably split this one either way. So, we'll leave it here for now. I gotta rest my voice. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please, um, if you're looking forward to the series or you just um, want to support me, uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, um, hit that notification bell so you know when more of these go up, and uh, share the video, please. I'd appreciate all of that. And that's all I got for you today, so take care. And bye-bye.